Welcome home, everybody. This is the Residency Podcast. I am Jeff Tomastic with Drew Belcher and Low Raven. Hello. We are here in Las Vegas to bring you our takes on the biggest stories in business, entertainment, hospitality, and pop culture. Make sure you to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Give us five stars. Write a review on Apple Podcasts. Check out our full video episodes on YouTube. Also on Spotify, as always. We're back in the saddle, baby. We're back. We're Feeling here. good. We're back. Holidays good. are yeah. here. Holidays nice. I'm fattened up real quick. I feel good. Definitely. For sure. I put on at least five pounds. Yeah, gained a couple pounds. Yeah. No big deal. I'll, I'll get it off in January. Uh, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Holiday yeah. period. Uh, obviously, guys, we took a week off to be with family, but we're back at it. No more breaks. I promise it'll never happen again. None. Yes. Uh, we have a huge episode, and this is actually our first ever episode on the road. We're, we're, we're not in our studio, guys. Yeah, we have it's an away mobile. game. This is the it first. Was mobile. Uh, so we are recording from the largest sports book in the world inside Circa Las Vegas. We have an incredible guest today. He is one of the most successful casino owner operators in Las Vegas. He owns multiple properties in downtown Las Vegas, including the D, Golden Gate, the Downtown Event Center, and the brand new crown jewel of downtown Las Vegas, the 777 room Circa Resort and Casino, where we're recording now. Um, so we all know the saying, the house always wins. Well, he is literally the house. <laughs> The downtown, the he is the house. yeah, the downtown Don himself, Derek Stevens. Welcome to the show. Welcome, man. man. How you doing? Yeah, hey, uh, great, great to be with you guys. And uh, I didn't realize this is your first road trip here. I mean, this is our first road trip. Fifty minutes up uh, up the road here, but wow, what what a what a set of equipment you guys got for this road trip. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Yeah, nope. this is official. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if anyone told you, but we're not leaving. Actually, we're just going to carve yeah, out this, this little is spot now our permanently. Spot. Sorry, for man. sure. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Good pretty location. Good. There you yeah. go. There you go. We got to put some posters. Uh, we got We got to put some logos around too. Uh, well, thank you for coming on. How's your Thanksgiving? All good. All good. Okay. Uh, different Thanksgiving for me. I, uh, I, okay. you know, I'd grown up in Detroit, and, and uh, I think I've been to the Lions game like oh. every year for the last thirty years. It's a big family tradition, Absolutely. and then everybody comes back to our place afterward. That's and awesome. uh, well, it changed this year. You know, yeah. a couple yeah, of reasons. Sure. Uh, first, there's no nobody's going to a Lions game, and. Uh, you know, it's limitations on family members traveling. And, uh, well, we just opened circus, so Nicole and I were hunkered down <laughs> over here. But it was great. A little bit of responsibility to stick around, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, well, let's dive right into Circa, obviously. So with tourism, as you said, taking such a hit in Las Vegas and all over the country, what was it like moving forward and opening such a huge project this year? You kind of threw all Especially the common sense out the window and said, you know what, I'm still opening. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, we were um, originally planning to open um, Circa until December 28th. And okay. then in April, when everything was shut down here in, in, in Las Vegas, and you know, our governor deemed construction to be an essential industry, we were actually able to accelerate the opening. So we opened, you know, the first five stories, basically the world's largest sports book, all of our restaurants, um, stadium swim. We were able to open that October 28th. So, so during the pandemic, we didn't have some of the construction restri restrictions, you yeah. know, with all the noise ordinances. And then because we're building in a city, we were able to utilize um, some of the street, the lane closures to yeah, kind absolutely. of accelerate things. So we, we actually were able to open up 60 days early to oh, wow. what we were originally planning. Thrived because that never happens in construction at Absolutely all. Absolutely yeah, not. It's usually six <laughs> yeah, yeah. weeks later. Yeah, you can't get yeah. a little restaurant built, let alone a whole casino. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's awesome. great then, though, too. So actually, you think it really gave you kind of a push forward to be able to really get everything done? Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, like I said, we were planning and opening everything December 28th. And, and uh, you know, one thing I knew going in is it, it takes a little while to, to kind of get the momentum going on a Absolutely. property. Sure. And we were planning on that. Um, what what this really did is it allowed us to uh, open up two months early and 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 kind of get a little more of a, a little more momentum by the time we hit New Year's and everything. Yeah. So so for us we were excited about it and maybe we could generate a little bit of cash flow and and uh, the other thing is um, which was really pretty awesome is that um, you know we're employing fifteen hundred fifteen hundred people here. That's awesome. At That's a point, huge. At a point in time in Las Vegas when fifteen hundred jobs is. Real important. It's a little it's bit different, you know, a couple Definitely. years ago. 50, okay, it's additional 1,500 jobs. But right now, jobs are needed. So I thought that 100%. was uh, um, even uh, a little more important now than under, under normal times. 100%, Absolutely. yeah. Has the opening met your expectations so far? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. A um, mm -hmm. couple things. When we, first, when we first did the pro forma for the project, A, we never did it with – a pandemic in mind. Sure, yeah, sure. Of B, we never planned on opening without a hotel. Sure. So uh, 
So, you know, a lot of pretty substantial variables that weren't in the mix. So I have to say that, um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what we're seeing, um, let's say from Thursday nights, uh, Friday nights, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, everything is going great. Um, Monday through Wednesday is very, very slow. Sure. Which uh-huh. I think is the case everywhere, everywhere in Las Vegas right now. For sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, without having a hotel, I would say, you know, our morning business and even right up to right now when we're talking, it's a little bit slower than what we would have thought. But that's only because people like to drink and gamble and get something to eat worth in the location they wake up. Sure. You know, so so I know four weeks from now that dynamic's gonna change a little bit. But yeah, on an overall basis um, yeah, I'm real happy with how things open up. Yeah, because yeah. just seeing on social media, I feel like everyone's coming down here, everyone's posting, everyone's eating in the restaurants, everyone's going out to the pool with a huge screen, yeah, everyone's checking out. checking out this huge sports book. Great job so far. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of the thing. It gets everybody an opportunity to figure out how to get here, figure out how to get in and exactly. out of Garage Mahal, and figure out, you know, and you have an opportunity to see something new and something shiny in vegas and it's uh and it's pretty good to be able to get people out out and about to be able to see something like, see yeah something. for the record it took us a couple laps to figure out how to park yeah, and yeah, get everything yeah, yeah, situated yeah. but we found it. downtown las yeah. vegas is a construction zone yeah. for sure yeah. um so since circa is the first ground up brand new casino in downtown vegas since the 80s do you think the surrounding properties look at circa as competition or the beginning of like this new era of attracting more attention to downtown las vegas uh you know the the cool thing about downtown Vegas for me is the fact that the Fremont Street Experience, um, it's a separate LLC. It's a separate corporation, and it's owned by all the casinos. So oh, wow. uh, I'm on the board of the Fremont Street Experience, as is Tillman Fertitta at mm-hmm. the Golden Nugget, as yeah. is Terry Caudill from, from uh, Four Queens, as you know, as is the the, the individuals from uh, Boyd Gaming and the Fremont. And, and, and we meet every Tuesday. And, and when you meet every Tuesday, and you have for a long, long time, <laughs> we uh, we all kind of know each other's tendencies, and we all get along really well. So I had a chance to meet with all of, all, all of the other casinos to talk about Circa. This goes back a couple of years. Yeah. And obviously, there's a lot of questions. What's this going to do? And and uh, I'd say everyone was um, over the top excited about it. Everyone was everyone was excited about creating another draw downtown. And you just take something like Garage Mahal as an example. Um Everyone is excited because it's going to create more um, uh, more parking spots, but it's going to create more of a destination. And we know that yeah. when people come downtown, everybody visits three point five casinos. Sure, you know? yeah. so yeah. it's just it's just not many people come down to come down to downtown and visit one place. You're going to go bop yeah. around, check things out, and sure. things like that. So, That's so true. No, yeah. everybody everybody was uh, was uh, yeah really really excited about it. I mean, it's true. Well, you know, you need a shining beacon to really bring people back down here too. And edu- I think there's a lot of people, obviously, being from Las Vegas for a lot of years, and Drew growing up here there too. So every time I talk to someone too, they really don't know, especially tourists. They don't really know a lot about downtown Las Vegas yet. There's a lot to learn and a lot to show them, which I think is going to help. Whose idea was it to make it adults only? Uh, that was something I wanted to do for for uh, for quite a while, and uh, and you know, I I thought it was going to be uh, an idea that people would like. Yeah. Um, I I didn't expect that many people to jump on and, <laughs> and start talking about it like as a talking point. And the I think initially when people heard we were going to go uh, 21 and over, um, all the interviews I did were oriented. What's going on there? What type of strip club? Sure, are you sure. Doing? Are you yeah, doing? right. What's, <laughs> what did the kids do to you? You know, <laughs> there's something going on inside those and, doors. And I had to quickly tell everybody, "Whoa, you guys are going down the wrong path. That's not yeah. it at all." What what we have is, um, um, you know, a benefit. There's three entrances on the first floor, and then there's one entrance coming from Garage Mahal. Mm-hmm. And my whole premise behind this was just simply, really twofold. Number one, you know, at midnight when somebody's visiting from out of town and they've got a cigar in their hand and they've got a they got a drink in their hand yeah. they just don't really want to get run over by by a baby stroller 100 percent doesn't sure. mean doesn't mean that individual doesn't like kids yeah. i mean it, but but he he probably spent a lot of time and effort to get a babysitter fly out here all that and they're, everybody's trying to get away you know yeah. so so it's just that it was one of those things i've been i've been sitting at the bar for so long around here for <laughs> well 14 years and i just heard a lot of complaints about oh my god i can't believe that this person has their six month old out or their two yeah, two year old out at sure. one in the morning. Exactly. It just it just kind of created a bad vibe. Yeah. So that was one point. But here's really the other one, and I think 
a lot of people didn't really understand this, but what this does is it allows us to ID everyone at one of the four entrances yeah. one time. And then when you come in, you never have to be bothered with getting ID. Oh, that's again. good. That's so, true. so when you think about someone goes up to a bar and and orders a drink, they don't have to pull out their ID. If they go to a blackjack table, they don't have to do it. Let's just say you have a bachelorette party and the bartender has to ID eight girls. Yeah. Sure. And it's 15 seconds per. It's like two minutes. And then and then the bartender has to know, you know, 50 different IDs around the country, Absolutely. you know, and all that. And then, you know, you might have another group stack up behind them and then stack up behind them. Yeah. So really f- for us, what it is, we thought it will allow us to provide much better customer service. So if somebody walks up to a bar, somebody walks up to a blackjack, and none of our bartenders or dealers or cocktail servers have to ask for an ID. Sure. They know yeah, they're smart. over 21. And we just thought that that was going to provide for a far, far superior customer service um, perspective. We thought that, you know, by going 21 and over, you know, we're going to lose a little bit of hotel business because some people are going to come into town with their with their teenage son or daughter yeah. or, or something like that. We know we're going to lose a, bit, a little bit of hotel business by doing it, but we thought that was worthwhile because we thought we could provide a far superior customer service um, um, standard for yeah. everybody that's in the casino. Absolutely. From the guy that's the baby face of the group, right? Yeah. I get carded probably four or five times anytime I go out, yeah. right? It's getting at the door, getting a drink, sitting down to play some black. I'm getting carded every single time. And it is not true. being, not having that is going to be incredible. It's a lot. Plus there's not a lot of, fir- I mean like, you know, obviously the sports book and stadiums and we're big attractions for you too. But when you're opening anything in Las Vegas, it's pretty tough to be the first anymore right you can improve on a lot of things too so i think that's brought a lot of attention to the resort in addition to everything else that you guys did though too it was small and maybe you didn't expect it to be a huge topic but everyone like grabbed onto that too and they were like what, what are you talking about what do you mean adults only too and i think that gave and people love that you look at mexico and some of these other destinations like cancun cabo adults only resorts are a huge attraction you know outside of people who don't want like you said strollers running timmy over their tommy feet <laughs> running around. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm saying timmy tom i'm trying to order a mojito right here yeah. you know get out of me stop grabbing my knee <laughs> I, mean, I think that's one of the things in Vegas. If some customer service at, at the nightclubs or at the day clubs is so great, but in reality, they they check your ID at the door. Sure, you're yeah. not checking you every time you have to go up and order a drink or something. Like yeah, that. and I think I think that just gives the ability to have some better customer service. I love that. I like it. It's good. Um, so as far as downtown Vegas goes, where do you, obviously Circa being a massive foot forward for downtown Vegas? And we've talked about downtown Las Vegas a lot on this show. Where do you see Las Vegas in the next 10 years, downtown Las Vegas specifically in the next 10 years, and like where the evolution comes from here? Yeah, you know, I, I've been lucky enough. I, I bought the Golden Gate in uh, 2006, and yeah. then 2008, the economy crashed, yep. and then, um, you know, 2010, all of a sudden, things started coming back because sure. prices got much cheaper. And I got to be part of seeing this evolution of, what Fremont East became and then what's going on at Symphony Park and then the Mom Museum and the new City Hall and just watching watching Vegas kind of kind of come back and being a little bit of a part of it has been pretty cool. I think I think right now I think you're going to you're going to see you know a continued amount of investment into this surrounding area. The um, there's a pretty big project that's going to be opening in March just a few months away at Symphony Park a um, couple of pretty pretty big residential locations yeah um that have been under construction now for a little over a year and they open in uh open in uh open in march just really heck a couple blocks from here yeah and i think you know each of them are around 340 units uh so it's going to bring a lot more people sure that actually live down live for down sure. this way so i think that's great and then i think uh, you're going to continue to see some additional projects on fremont east and i think you're going to have a few more projects here you know, in the arts district, in the medical district. So I think you're going to continue to see see some growth uh, growth in this area. Yeah, we've always talked about and said once they fix and improve the living situation downtown for locals to want to come and move down here and live down here, work down here, play down here, that's when I think downtown will really boom, like you said. So Yeah, I think I've got uh, – I probably have about 10, uh, 10 people that work here either at Circa or the D that are all excited about this new – about this, um, these couple of new projects because uh, it just makes things easy. You know, yeah, you absolutely. live right down yep. here, and you you don't have to worry about you know at, after work if you get a few drinks. You know, you're close enough. Yeah. You can just head home, buy sure. home, sure. whatever. Sure. So I think 
I think um, you know that these two these two projects are the next next great thing downtown. I think it's going to keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. and it'll Roman. make it safer. You yeah, know, no, for absolutely. people to feel for more sure. comfortable walking downtown late at night. If you improve the residential living aspect, people will feel more safe. Right. Yeah. And it just helps everything go. Plus, go we've seen the past five to seven years downtown Vegas has drastically changed with oh, the yeah. offerings absolutely. that it has, too. So, yeah. obviously, the next five to ten years, too. We're hoping, obviously, as are you and pioneering it, but it's going to boom even more. Um, since we are sitting in the sports book right now, thank you for building it, by the way. Perfect, perfect it's podcast huge. studio. Awesome. It's huge. <laughs> kind of watching the game as yeah. we build it. Yeah. <laughs> um, since you built the world's largest sports book uh, here at Circa, so while it seems that everyone is focusing on mobile betting, I know Circa has a, an incredible mobile ge- uh, betting app. Do you think the sports book is still a big attraction, obviously, for people to be a communal betting atmosphere and watching the game versus the the uh, the boom of mobile betting? Yeah, you know, I... I um I'm excited about the fact that currently there's 19 states that offer legalized sports betting yeah. uh, on their phones, and, and that number is going to continue to go up in the future. And my thought about it always was that the more people that are betting around the country, that when they come to Vegas, whether they're coming for a convention or whether they're coming for just fun or whatever, they're all going to want to come and see the the world's biggest sports book. 100%. And, and you know, we've been – open now for uh for a total of five uh football sundays here and uh <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's pretty awesome I mean, the place gets filled up the roar of the crowd um, sure. watching all the games so i i'm a big believer that that even if you have um the ability to make a bet on your phone people still love getting together and getting a couple buckets of beer getting some yeah. Food from Victory Burger or, 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 or Project Barbecue delivered right to you. And you get to hang out and watch football all day. Um, I think there's a big communal element where where watching um, sports is an event in and of itself. We yeah. had the ability to to transform the old Clark County Courthouse into the downtown Las Vegas Event Center mm-hmm. in, in 2015, and we kind of built out all these watch parties. It was watch parties for the Golden Knights, watch parties for UNLV basketball, things like that. And I, I've always thought that. When people get together to watch a game, it's a more social, um, a social, socially interactive type of type of scenario. More so than if you're going to a game. Sure. Like if you yeah, go to a game and you've got tickets. Yeah, for sure. Let's say you've got six tickets in the same row. Well, if you're sitting in seat A and somebody else is in F, you're not really talking that much. Yeah, not at all. at all. But this on a watch environment, whether it's at our sports book or stadium swim, people are are engaged in a different way while they're talking with everybody. They're going, oh, I can't believe this play. I can't believe this play. I want to make yeah. it. So it's, 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 a, it's a real social way of watching games, and which is, which is really different than just the pure betting on your phone where you could be doing that at your house by yourself. Yeah, for very sure. true. Yeah, it's completely different, and I think that's probably why you built such these amazing social experiences for these guests. Like, looking at this sports book, it's crazy. Same with the pool on the outside with the huge screens. That's crazy. That's a cool social experience. Yeah, he's yeah, he's ruining my house immediately as, yeah. I look, as I look behind it. The house is trash. Garbage. <laughs> trash. <laughs> absolutely terrible. Uh, plus, everyone wants to go see the world's biggest anything, by the yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a great title. It's a great that. way it's to incredible. get people through the door to see it. Because honestly, as we're sitting here right now, too, like I, NFL players are, you know, 35 feet behind me right now. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, how, by the way, so the other huge addition to Circa is the Stadium Swim. So tell us a little bit about that and how you came up with Stadium Swim. Uh, essentially, people are going to be watching. Are you a big pool party guy? I uh, I am. I love day clubs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We all love we day all clubs. We all love day right. clubs. I love day <laughs> clubs. Yeah, so, so really, it, it evolved. It started, I would say, probably 2012. Uh, my okay. wife and I, we would head out and... We go to we go to one day club or another, and um, we always go out with some friends and things like that. And we get a cabana or get a table or something. And then, inevitably, you know, it's it's April or May or whatever, and I can't. I got a couple of big bets on games, yeah. and I can't freaking find a television to watch <laughs> the game on. Right? While yeah, I, that's I true. Mean, I'm real. I was real happy to you know be at Chainsmokers or Beachy or, or, or RTS or whatever, but. But when I got a big game going, I can't. There's not a freaking TV that works. Yeah, turn these TV lasers off crazy. and turn on ESPN immediately. No, I don't. But I don't need it. I, I just need it on the side. You know, when yeah, yeah, it yeah, gets yeah. out of overtime, yeah. I want to watch a couple minutes. Exactly That's it. for sure. So it's just kind of how it kind of evolved. And I've always loved the pool scene, and I, I've loved the nightclub scene. Uh, maybe a little bit more so when I was your age, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but I but I love it. And and uh, really, what happened was we ended up doing these events um at the downtown las vegas event center and 
we we tried all kinds of different styles, different size screens, different type of environment, different type of speakers, and uh, and and it was really four years of testing events is how we developed Stadium Swim, and that's awesome. kind of why I wanted to build a a tiered um, a tiered uh, uh, aqua theater type of thing. I wanted yeah. to have water as part of it. I mean, heck, we. We even bought it. We bought a monstrous pool and put it in the event center just to try it out. And then, <laughs> yeah. we're like, wow, people are hanging out there. Then we built a bar next to it. Whoa, people like walking up, walking up and buying from that bar. It was pretty cool. And that, that's yeah. how a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff we did was stuff we just kind of trialed out a little bit. There was yeah. even a sand beach at one point. There was a sand beach. Sand beach. Oh, that's right. We had yeah. Sammy. We had Sammy that's Hagar's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, his birthday party over there. Yeah. We brought in a sand beach. There was a pool they had constructed. There was a sand beach. That's there incredible. were girls in the sand, guys hanging out, drinking beer. It was, it was wild. <laughs> Vegas has it, it all. Wild. I love it. Vegas love has it. it all. So anything big planned for Stadium Swim that everybody needs to know about for the winter upcoming next year? Yeah, I mean the the thing about I always thought was you know how. Why why do pools stay open in Aspen or Vail or yeah. in these, or in northern it's, Michigan? If they can put keep a pool up, why do all the pools in Vegas close? I just never yeah. understood that. So we wanted to build something where we can maintain the temperature. So we we try to keep it about ninety three, ninety five. Oh wow! Um, I had my uh, first full NFL Sunday at Stadium Swim yesterday. We had about twenty people and uh, watched all the games up there. Uh, I was happy to say. I mean, it was. It was sold out, so it was it was pretty good. We we've, we've kind of we sold out every cabana every Sunday. We've been open now. Oh wow! Um, That's so and fun. the fact that now we're getting into, into December, or January. I mean, I I know it's going to be different in the summer, but right now doing this in the you know in the winter kind of kind of pretty cool. So yeah. what we wanted to do is we want to create something where it's it's basically sun, music, and fun during the day, and then at night. We kind of roll it over into a great place to watch the World Series or watch a Golden Knights game or yeah, watch time, watch football yeah. games sure. and things like that. So, so we're we're opening at eight o'clock and you know right now we're running till about eleven p.m. Okay. I think in the summer we might run a little bit later, but it's that's probably one thing that's a little bit different than day club. You know where where a day club opens at eleven, you better be there by twelve. You're yep. not there by twelve thirty, you're gonna lose your cabana. Sure, sure. Yeah, exactly. You gotta hurry up and get ready. Two o'clock headliners yeah. on. Four o'clock headliners. He knows this guy. He knows this guy. He knows this guy. And boom, so at four thirty, the pool empties out. At five, you got to be out the door. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I'm Six stumbling out. Rotate them out, man. Flip flop. I'm stealing the pool towel. Like, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm oh. taking it all. Classic day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. No one wants to not do that in the winter. By I the way, that. yeah, <laughs> I miss that. I miss that. <laughs> Keep it going. Uh, so, but just to give you guys uh, a, a view of what this is, though, too. This is like a this is a small outdoor viewing area, too. This is what four thousand person capacity, right? Yep, four thousand. And. The, how many pools are six six pools? We have a total of six pools, two jacuzzis, a uh, hundred and forty three foot uh, outdoor video screen. Yep. So we had we had a seventy foot screen out at uh, out at our event center. We just wanted to make it bigger. And, uh, <laughs> don't uh, don't we all? Wait, so this is twice the size of that screen. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, that screen's big too. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, house is trash. Yeah. House is over. <laughs> yeah. Never, never again. Am I watching games? There? Yeah, the theater room in the house yeah. is not a theater anymore. We accept your invite to come to the cabana next Sunday. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we, we accept. <laughs> we accept. Um, so speaking about gambling, you're a notorious gambler as well. Do you think being in the industry gives you an edge at all? Um, I would say maybe the fact that I I kind of grew up gambling um, that kind of helped me a little bit, maybe in my thought process a little yeah. bit um, from from the casino perspective um as far as uh, as far as gambling uh on sports yeah i probably hear a little bit a little bit more than maybe most just because we have a whole division that these <laughs> yeah sure. For sure i mean i mean 30 seconds ago, 30 seconds before i come in Schefter puts out a tweet saying that the ravens game on tuesday is now going to get pushed to wednesday yeah. right yeah okay from the time i'm in my office going to the elevator come down here to see you guys i see the tweet hit I already have two texts. Hey, ch lines changing. Hey, this is moving. So, oh, wow. so we have a whole department that, that basically live for information. Sure. They, they so have to cool. know. So maybe I hear a little bit, a little bit more than more than most. But I'll tell you what, sports is a pretty efficient market, and uh, and um, and that's really what it is. It's really become a market. So as soon as there's some uh, news and information, you, you see it the wagers right start flying in. Yeah. So uh, cool. Yeah, hundred percent. As an avid sports fan, that's the coolest yeah. thing ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got it all, all the inside data. Yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously, everyone really, especially living in Las Vegas, everyone always kind of wants to know the behind the scenes of what's really going on too, or any crazy things that have ever happened. Uh, do you have a most outrageous request a guest has ever asked for at any of the properties that you've ever owned? 
Yeah, there's a few, but um, we can't get into those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's perfect. That's, even that's better. Right. That's even better. Yeah, that's that even better. You don't even better. get to know they're so ridiculous. I, I love yeah, that. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stories, but, uh, but you know, not to get anybody in trouble, but, I mean, obviously there's a lot of people that come to Vegas that uh, – that maybe are you know sneaking out of town, or maybe don't want their boss or someone else to know that they're busting out for a day. Sure, sure. You, you get a lot of no, and and when somebody comes to Vegas under that premise, um, it usually goes haywire. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. We are wiring are you out. Saying this we go are wrong? Wiring out. <laughs> These camera phones take pictures. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, guys, you don't get to know because it's that ridiculous. So now you can just let your imagination run wild. That's even better. With what could have happened. It's even better. With what could have happened. Um, so you used to actually own a piece of the 51s, the former minor league baseball team here in Vegas. Um, so we want to know, since we don't get invited to all the secret... Uh, Tomorrow's yeah, meeting, the yeah, Tuesday yeah, meeting. Yeah, this, we're this, not in the Tuesday uh, meeting. This, this, the <laughs> secret Don's meeting. Um, do you think, and is there a sports team coming to downtown Las Vegas? Oh, you know, we, back when I, I owned the 51s, that was um, 2007 to 2013. Okay. When uh, when I first bought it, we were the AAA team for the Dodgers. Yeah. And then we reaffiliated. We're four years as the AAA team for the Toronto Blue Jays. Okay. And then we ended up selling the team just as they were reaffiliated with the Mets. The um, the cool thing about owning the, the AAA baseball team is, you know, you have a lot of players that make it to the big leagues. Sure. I think, so, like, yeah, during the awesome. time During the time uh, – we owned it. I think it was like I had 140, you know, players that made it to the big oh, leagues. Wow, so it's pretty lot. cool. That's crazy. Yeah. And and I'm still pretty good friends with a lot of them now. They still still cut, you know, every time they're in town, they'd shoot me a text or something. Um, but way back then, I've always thought that Vegas was a really underserved market for a, for a professional sports team. But remember, like 2009, 2010. People were all saying, oh, no sports team will ever come to Las Vegas because of the sports the game. Because of the gambling. Yeah. Yeah. gambling. That's all they'd say. Well, Things have changed a, co- a little bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how great is this that uh, w- what Bill Foley did get NHL here? Yeah. And then having the Golden Knights being so wildly popular, um, I think it just blew the lid off of everything. And then yeah. who would have ever thought the NFL would would have come here, you know? And Never. Mark Which Davis bringing, bringing the team and, 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 uh, and just amazing. So I think the whole stigma – of gambling is just is gone down is yeah. totally and now now the sports leagues have have officially changed their position like as opposed for sure to, we're against having They're everything partnering. to do with gambling yeah because yeah, they can make which, money off it now yeah, too right, you know? which, which after all those years you know they, they always had that position but yeah. it was really they're talking out of two sides of their mouth because sure. they understood if a guy has a wager on the game odds are he's going to stay in the stadium longer he's going to buy an extra beer yep. he's going to watch the your eat, tv ratings yeah. are going to go sure. up you know and all that so they always were talking out of both sides of their mouth but now it's come you know the extreme the other way now they're taking positions in fan duel and yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's all crazy. Of them. official partners at every team partners, now right. yeah, yeah it's unbelievable yeah so the, I, la- the lounges too you know yeah yeah so i've always thought vegas vegas was an underserved market that i thought could handle um a sports team and i'm just glad to see what's happened with the golden knights and then uh you know with with the raiders but i do think i do think vegas can handle more than two major league franchises Definitely. And, absolutely and and i think the vegas market's going to be a little bit different than maybe other cities in as much as i think there's a tremendous amount of of visitor demand to this destination you know I think sure. think about like, if you're a Green Bay Packer fan. Often Green Bay Packer fans take one road trip a year, you know, and yeah. you know they might have eighty thousand people to go watch the Green Bay Pack- Packers play at the great. Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Well, not all of them are getting into the game. They just overrun, you know, the every city. bar yeah. and everything yeah. else like that. So I think it's kind of the same thing here. And I think I could tell you very recently, um, it was a week ago Sunday when. We had the Chiefs playing in town against the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. Monster and game. stadium swimming was seventy percent Chiefs fans. That's oh insane. wow! And 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 you saw. I mean, Chiefs fans were surrounding Allegiant Stadium, sure. every bar. People travel, so so I think Vegas can actually handle more than just the two two teams we currently have. Yeah, Absolutely. fans fans always, especially NFL too. They circle that one or two games that they can go travel for the season. Vegas yeah. is Why always going to be Vegas, that right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Exactly like you said, you have these some families that live in you know a Green Bay where it's you know twenty degrees at some of these football games that these people are going to for a family of four with the husband and wife and the two kids. It's the perfect excuse for one trip a year to go to Vegas, go see a show, have some dinner, and oh, we can also squeeze in a football game. Yeah, basically, casually, the Packers yeah. are playing their Raiders yeah, it's on now Sunday, three day weekend. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So do you, there was a lot of rumors that there was an MLS team that was probably going to come to downtown Vegas. Do you think that's happening? 
Yeah, you know, at one point, uh, you know, Justin Finley got pretty close to getting a deal done to build uh, to build a stadium here, and it came down to a pretty pretty uh, pretty tight vote, and uh, it didn't happen. Um, so I think MLS, uh, you know, decided to look look elsewhere. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but I but I but I certainly believe that Vegas will have another sports team, whether it's NBA, whether it's Major League Baseball or MLS. I I, I don't think it's yeah too much too much further down the road you think you think three to five years or even or even sooner uh you know i think i think it could be a little bit sooner i think uh the pandemics actually accelerated the process and the reason is is the 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 current um major uh franchise owners um this has been a really rough year for sure uh, sure absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the amount of money that the major league baseball owners have lost the amount i mean not being able to have a ticketed fan um hockey Hockey's really in the same boat because tickets are tickets are most important in uh, in the NHL. Then they're second most important in, in in Major League Baseball. And without having fans in the stands, it really impacts the, those uh, those um, uh, sports. So I think I think baseball is kind of set up. I mean, there's 30 teams in baseball. I think everybody likes 32 team leagues. Yeah. So I think baseball could be there, and then. With what's happened in the NBA, I think uh, you know there's a few owners that are like thinking, "Oh man, I want I want to get rolling here, and this is yeah. a great time. I want to, a piece of Vegas, yeah, yeah, yeah. for I sure. Yeah, I, I I don't think that. I mean, you're you're completely right too. When when the Knights first came here, everyone was like, oh, "Okay, cool, we have an NHL team, whatever." And then literally, it seemed like overnight, everyone was reading hockey for dummies. Like the yeah. best part about the leagues is that I think everyone here there was a huge sect of people here that became hockey fans first and then became Golden Knights fans at the same time. You know, it was like, they were like, hey, yeah. I always liked the sport and maybe I'll go catch a game if I get some tickets if a friend has some. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, I want to spend my $200 hard-earned money to go see them and buy season sure. tickets. I now yeah. love the sport fully of, dive in, of yeah. hockey, right, too. I think it's just, in general, it was great to introduce that to Las Vegas. Obviously, NFL is a different story, too, but the, well, I'll be at MLS, too. It could be a major new attraction for people just for the MLS in general. Obviously, MLB would be incredible, too, and NBA... I mean, we have a few arenas around here. You know what I'm saying? Stash yeah. one of them up. Let's go. <laughs> you know, our our, our chief in- operating officer is just like you. He's a born and raised Vegas guy, yeah, and uh, never really uh, had had been to a hockey game uh, at all. And now, uh, you know, when the Golden Knights play, um, his schedule changes. You know, I sure, mean, he, sure. His wife's schedule changes, and yeah, uh, I like it. and they they love hockey and they love the Golden Knights, and and uh, to have have. You know all these new fans that really you know that that weren't hockey fans ten or ever 20, ever thirty years ever. ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that it's it's pretty awesome to see it. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, hundred percent. Um, you Lions or Raiders fan? I'm uh, I'm definitely a Lions fan. Okay. I always will be a Lions fan, but I'm going to root for the home team here. Right. Now, now realize also that as a Lions fan, <laughs> I, sure. I have always always picked one other team to root for <laughs> sure, sure, every sure. year. Yeah, I don't blame you. The Lions oh, so have won one, one A, one B. They yeah. have they have won one playoff game in my lifetime. Yeah, oh my and, goodness. Uh, Every year, I've always picked one AFC team to to sure. uh, to kind of root for. So uh, Raiders are Raiders are uh, fill enough. that so, fill that gap. Now. Yeah, same as my father. My father's actually from Detroit as well, and uh, so he grew up a huge Lions fan, a Red Wing fan. So I grew up a huge Red Wing fan during the dynasty. Uh, but yeah, he now he's got his Vegas teams, but. For right. the longest time, he's forever a Detroit fan, but you can shift they allegiances. All, they're all trash. Come on, they're all trash. <laughs> you've earned it. You've earned it. After a few of those years racked up, too, you've earned it. You've earned a fallback team. I'm not really worried about the Lions playing the Raiders in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a sweat, you know, <laughs> where you really have to pick a side. Yeah, yes. okay. We'll deal with that when it happens. Yeah. Um, so one thing that we all notice, obviously, we talk about business and marketing a ton on this podcast. Um, you handle marketing differently than most any other casino companies in Las Vegas. Uh, you're somewhat of a famous actor at this point. Um, <laughs> so what edge do you think featuring yourself in a lot of the marketing and for your properties gives you in general? Well... First, do you have an IMDb page, by the way? <laughs> no, I do. Actually, okay, we need, to, yeah, we need to get you on. We're, um, we're going to lace it up. Well, first off, it just kind of evolved that way. Sure. It wasn't it wasn't uh, there wasn't a whole lot of forethought to it, and then uh, I thought, well, I'm the cheapest guy they could find, so that 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 fits the bill. Smart, smart. Yeah, and go. then uh, and then after that, it's just there's a certain element we come up with ideas, and you know, most of our ideas uh, get developed after midnight. You know, sitting <laughs> yeah. at Long Bar sure, or sure. at Golden Gate late night, and we just come up with some ideas and see see if. Uh, 
if they feel good when we go to bed, we rethink about them the next morning. And <laughs> Double check. Uh, more, yeah. more often than not, we're like, oh, God, that was a terrible idea. That was horrible. Double that check. was horrible. Yeah. Hey, let me run this by someone else really quick just, just to make sure. But we just tried to have a lot of fun with what we're doing. And uh, like a lot of like all the people that 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 are a lot of my top, top executives and, and directors, uh, they're real characters. So our hosts are characters. And uh we uh we promote having a couple drinks at work. We promote smiling, laughing, uh, telling customers, uh, you know how glad we are to see him, and and just kind of come up with different ideas. We we, uh, we have a lot of fun with what we do. For we sure, tell. yeah, yeah. Well, that's obviously different. Usually, you don't have a face to a casino in this modern age or such a big property. Too, do people stop you when you're walking around or? Yeah, look at my fingers. all the time. My, 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 my <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. handshaking all week. Long. Still, <laughs> we're doing this on a Monday. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, no, I love meeting. I love meeting customers. I love uh, you know nowadays you take a lot of pictures and stuff like that. But I, yeah. I love meeting customers. Customers have great ideas, and you know you learn a lot about about different things. And like I, I mean, just simple stuff that. Hey, uh, I'm so glad I'm I'm here for I'm here in Vegas. I'm having a great time. Oh, by the way, I'm in eight. I'm in 18, 1822, and your secondary lamp uh, is not working. Okay, write the <laughs> note down. But it's like nonstop stuff. Yeah, like that. sure. And I, kinda, I love the instant feedback, and we, you know, and I just love meeting customers, and our and our and our people do, and we just have a have a lot of fun. I love. I that. like it. Well, we're That's available awesome. for commercials, by the way. Too. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, yeah. We'll jump in there. Yeah, when you want some extra faces, you let us know. <laughs> um, so you earlier this year you get a flight giveaway, not which I thought was incredible too, just to promote Vegas in general. It wasn't anything to do with your properties. Did you think it would explode? It was insane. like it did when you actually first released this too. So if you guys don't don't know, he actually did a giveaway where it was he was giving away flights to Las Vegas with no requirement to stay at his properties at all too anywhere in Las Vegas. Really just to get people coming back here. It went absolutely crazy. It did go absolutely crazy. <laughs> it I, did. I, like it uh, went, cra- it went unbelievable. I, sometimes you don't know if some of those things are going to happen, but yeah, that one went crazy. But I'll tell you exactly how that happened. It was, it was in April. We were, we were talking like you know, once we're able to open up, we got to do something that that gets people excited to come back to Las Vegas. And I want to do something with flights because um, the airline industry is an industry that's so important to tourism here. And 100%. and let's do something that supports airlines. So the thought was, is it one airline? I'm like, no, let's get all of them. So our guys reached out and we talked to basically, you know, all, all the major airlines and see if they want to participate. We said, hey, we want to buy, let's just say, let's say between 40 to 50 seats from, let's say, five to 10 of your destinations. What do you got? We wanted to, we wanted to geographically do this a little bit all over the country yeah. sure and then the airlines all came back saying yeah i'll get you 30 seats from milwaukee on on the on the day you open and then you know 10 from appleton wisconsin some minneapolis and so i'm like wild. okay so everybody's kind of being part of it and then what we said is when we announced it was like okay we're going to open on june 4th um we had flights that lasted for about i don't know four or five days and they're a little bit all over just first come first serve and if you wanted to stay at our properties, uh, that's cool. That'd be great. And if you want to stay elsewhere, that's cool too, because this yeah. is something that that Las Vegas needs. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah. the D only has six hundred and twenty nine hotel rooms, and we yeah. bought a thousand flights, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, of course, they had to stay somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And then when we put it out there, and we said, okay, first come, first serve, and I forget the exact time, but it was something like we did at nine a.m. Yeah. And then by like ten thirty or eleven a.m. They're all booked. Gone. We're yeah. like, what? We were in an operation. We're like, what? It's like, this can't be. And then and then uh, we were right in the meeting. We said, wow. Did you run this all in-house, too? Yeah. yeah oh, wow. Was, and then we just said, they went that quick. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, why don't you call the airlines? See if they got a 1,000 more. <laughs> now, realize, we're not talking about $800. <laughs> we're, we're buying one-way flights. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. And this is coming off of when Vegas was shut down. So, I mean, yeah. we, we had the ability. We had some pretty good deals here. Yeah. Um, but we bought, yeah, I, I think we offered up like 2,000 one way flights into Vegas. Yeah. You know, I think 1,700 of them ended up getting taken and things like that. So yeah, it was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So we've done some giveaways on this podcast. We've done a lot of giveaways on the podcast yeah. and that one went absolutely crazy on social media. Like yeah. went unbelievable. Like you said, it's people just like, even if the, the monetary value isn't that crazy, it's just the thought process of saying, Hey, you know what? Here's a thousand flights. Come here, come to Vegas. You don't have to stay in my properties too. Let's get this city going again. Uh, Unbelievable. It's outside it was the bus huge. Thinking. Yeah, so yeah awesome. for sure. Yeah. Uh, another one of our favorite marketing things you did was 
Kanye West tweeted that he was fifty million dollars in debt. <laughs> we talk about Kanye a lot of this podcast. Oh, okay. You yeah. tweeted to him that if he performed at the downtown event center, that Kanye could keep all the ticket revenue, and that went super viral. <laughs> did does Kanye ever tweet you back? Uh, no, we just put it out there. I couldn't believe so. We we do a lot of goofy. goofy I love stuff it. Yeah, like no, we love that. We love it. Yeah. yeah. So we're just out there messing around. Like when that when that story came out about about Kanye, yeah, we put we just put the tweet out and like we got a lot of goofy things <laughs> like that. And then yeah, people picked it up. Like yeah, we didn't expect him to come and play, but we had just he had just played. Uh, I think it was like earlier that year at Life Is Beautiful or something okay. like that. And yeah, put it out there. Yeah. It's, Kanye, just want to let you know the offer still stands. <laughs> send a little send a tweet. <laughs> back. Send a tweet back. So Kanye, if you're listening, you know, we got you. We'll be a part of it. We'll do a whole thing. We'll do an episode too. Yeah, for sure. Whatever yeah, you want, yeah. Man. We'll be there on location. Um, we obviously want to touch on the fact too. Obviously, legend Tony Shea passed away a few days ago too. Um, were you guys really close? Yeah, I got to know Tony pretty well. I mean, um, I uh I like Tony personally. Um, I liked what he brought to Vegas and uh yeah, it's uh, it's just sad. I mean, I, I think I've used this quote saying it's a sad day for uh, for downtown Vegas, um, but it's a sad time for America. Yeah. yeah. And w- the reason I say that is no one gets to know what we didn't get to see. No one Definitely. gets to understand the the next act and. Um, you know, I don't know if, how well you guys follow this, but uh, but Tony's uh, was going down this uh, this new path, and uh, and I mean the website just went up a few weeks ago, you know, the, with the rabbit hole and the number of new projects um, in 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 some in Park City, um, some in other areas of the country, some in Las Vegas. Um, he was just ready to bust out with. Uh, a whole bunch of new projects and for that that's why i say it's just, it's just kind of a sad yeah sad situation for america um that we never get to see yeah um the amount of capital and the amount of passion one guy could put in I me mean, you know he obviously stepped down as, C- as ceo zappos uh back a few months ago but it was all just getting prepared for the rabbit hole yeah. and, and all these incredible projects that were coming up. And that's, that's something where I think as a country, we're really going to miss out on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute legend, visionary beyond belief, obviously changed downtown Las Vegas in general too. So obviously a huge loss. Um, so we end each of our episodes with, with a segment called eat a drink and binge it. And we give recommendations on where to eat or something to eat to, uh, where it's something to drink, whether it's a, a place to go or a cocktail or a brand that you might like to, and uh, binge something to binge too, whether it be a book, a TV show, podcast, whatever it may be too, something that you're into. Obviously, we'd love yours to be anything in Vegas like outside of your properties, like recommendations of your favorites to eat or drink. Obviously, binge it can be whatever you want. Um, I'll start, so it gets, gets around to you last. We, we got to put you on the spot, see who you can come up with. All right. Um, so eat it for me. Is uh, finesse catering? Okay. Here in Las Vegas, uh, honestly, they're amazing. So every holiday, every holiday, they do these like boxes, like holiday boxes, Thanksgiving boxes, Christmas boxes, July Fourth, whatever else too, and these crazy like you know, you know, you always need something just to give to someone for, sure, sure. for the holidays too. We did a couple this year too for Mother's Day, for Valentine's Day too. So they have some crazy ones coming out for the holidays. They're super amazing. They're local. Okay. Um, our friend Jackie yeah. owns a company. Honestly, super good. Oh, yeah. So check, okay, yeah cool. ch- ch- check them out. Finesse Catering. She's a chef. They're incredible. They can put custom things together, too. They also do small events. Big fan of their work, too. We get some of their stuff every holiday, too. So we're going to get a bunch of their Christmas ones, too. So check them out. Finesse Catering. Super delicious. There you go. Boom. A uh, big thing in Vegas is like these like all 24-hour pubs and stuff. So the other night, I was looking for something to eat. I stopped by a place called The Lodge on Cactus. Yeah. yeah. I had their- Lodge great. Yeah. I had their ca- uh, Cajun pasta. It was incredible. There you go. You got to love bars. It's like the taverns having good food. Yeah, but it was like amazing pasta. It Did was- you partake in a little drinking beforehand? Uh, no, I just got off work, so I okay, got it, got it. I was gonna say it was, yeah, yeah, this a, this is a drunk review. No, it was okay, actually yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, a late, late dinner, extra late dinner. It was like yeah. four in the morning, dinner, yeah, yeah, for sure. Shout out Lodge, Big Ambrose Supporter. We love you. Uh, so I cooked for the first time for Thanksgiving. I made a oh, green. God. <laughs> I made a green bean casserole. I didn't realize it was so easy to make. It turned out great. Super easy. Yeah, just cream of mushroom, some canned green beans or fresh green beans. I used the canned ones and little crispy onions. Green bean casserole. There's there a battle. Is. Melissa, Melissa's whole entire family hates green bean casserole, and they make what? it every single year because I love it. Yeah, it's oh, fantastic. Well, they must I'm really love you. Spooning it out like a loser yeah, in the yeah, corner. Green bean <laughs> yeah. casserole. And they're like, "Hey, you better eat this for every single day." I'm like, "I can't have." 
I can't have green bean casserole in December. This is like a two day thing. Yeah. You know? There you go. Um, eat it. Any, any favorite places that you have in Las Vegas? Yeah. Derek? Um, there's a, there's a, quite a few, but I would say the one that, uh, we've been hitting up late night, um, le- even though it doesn't have to be late night is, uh, El Dorado Cantina. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. I was just there last week. Yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah. Have you been I, to the new one in Summerlin? Yeah. Okay. So I live, uh, I live a couple blocks from there. So yeah. for me, it's a pretty easy, uh, call here and then by the time i get home it's an easy pickup here sure. so it's perfect so el dorado is great they got that that uh table side if you're going in that table yeah, side walk guac- guac- yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the thing yeah. Yeah. and then you have to have you have to put your spice level on the guac because it can <laughs> yeah. go el fuego quick <laughs> i always, I always <laughs> shoot it too high by the way i'm i'm a i'm a definite person i'll pay double for anything if you make it next to my table yeah Caesar salad <laughs> guacamole no problem yeah, you are that guy anything that's made next to me i'll double the price it's totally fine uh, by the way shout out aaron baker chris zady uh for um for El Dorado, amazing. Uh, drink, mine's a brand called Usual Wines. Okay. So um, it's like a single, it's actually nicer wine, but they're single serving wines again. Really sick bottle. Not that expensive at all. Um, another really good brand if you don't want to open a full bottle of wine all the time too. And it's actually pretty affordable. So yeah, so it's little guys. But you can come in and set. It can be different thing, different reds, different whites, different rosés, little gift pack, whatever. Uh, but Usual Wines, really good. Um, check them out. Yeah. So mine's holiday season is here. Starbucks, my drink for the holiday season is the caramel ribbon crunch. Uh, wow, yeah. It's, you low it, low you sugar, sugar drinks are unbelievable. Insane. Add an extra little bit of the caramel crunch. Okay. And then uh, whip in the whipped cream. Got to go. Got it. Good to go. All right, there you go. Easy. So last night I went to Red Rock Casino in Summerlin and went to Mary Crimson, the little Christmas yeah, yeah, theme yeah. pop-up they have there. It's okay. crazy. Lights everywhere. It was out of this world. But all their cocktails. They had super cute uh, holiday-themed cocktails. They were great. Obviously, strict more for Instagram for the visual aspect, but they weren't that bad. That's what it takes, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they were good. So sprinkles on top or low over here. You yeah, know everything sure. was in like an ornament or a shape of a Christmas tree. They had a Grinch-themed one. It was great. Yeah. Uh, Crimson at the Red Rock. I like good. that. What are you? What are you drinking, Derek? You got a favorite cocktail or a favorite brand or a face, do, favorite but, place? But I'm I'm struggling because you said it has to be something that is not on property, right? I can be on property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, as part of my job, I drink for my job. So yeah, I try to only there drink we go. While I'm at work, <laughs> there, there you go. Drink go. Home. There you like go. I love that. That's what do you got? Best. What do you got? Give it to us. I would tell you that I I really this is this is as fresh as it could be. I mean, I really enjoyed drinking at Stadium Swim yesterday. I had about twenty people outside. We watched. The early games, the late games, and then there a lot of music and people were dancing and things That's like awesome. that. And I, uh, I just really enjoyed that vibe of uh, of of having a. I had a couple of uh, vodka lemonades. I, I drink Captain and Diet Diet as my primary drink right. of choice, okay. and then we had a, you know, a few buckets of beer. So it was a, it was a good uh, a winning good, Sunday. That's wow. it's just a winning Sunday. We're doing it. We're gonna do it. We're yeah, gonna yeah, we're gonna yeah, do, we're we're gonna gonna go do that. Yeah, in, sure. I told you, in, invitation is accepted. I'll see you on. Just tell us what command it is. We'll be there. <laughs> Uh, binge it. I don't know if anyone's ever said it this one too, but The Crown on Netflix. I haven't seen it. I never it. gave it a shot, and it's like I actually like finding new shows that have a couple seasons in. So like I know that if I like it, I have a little, I have a little runway. But The Crown is a story of Queen Elizabeth, like her, and it's actually obviously based on facts too, since you know this is from when she actually took the crown from her dad, King George, and all the way into like this present season has like Princess Diana and stuff into it too. Awesome, uh, ridiculous show. It's like one of those shows like. Kind of like the old school HBO shows too, where sure. they spend like a million dollars an episode. Sure. Like, just the whole thing is unbelievable. But The Crown on Netflix, check it out. Super good. Sweet. Um, if you want to be, you know, get a British vibe going, you know what I mean? I like it. What do you got? I'm sticking with the holiday season. Christmas movies, my favorite. Are you Hallmarking? Huh? You, no, yeah, no. Okay. Um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Bro, Chevy Chase. Fire. Come on. Classic. So, Classic. That's what I'm going to be binging this yeah. week. I watched okay. The Grinch the other night, but I'm going to watch that one. That's Classic. I like that. I really like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm known for the trash. He Super. watches the worst things. It's like literally the like worst. Stuff. I'm like the sucker for the worst trashiest reality TV ever. America's Next Top Model. <laughs> See? Come on. Hey, the new season. The new season. It's not bad. I'm just gonna throw it out there. America's <laughs> Next Top. <laughs> America's Next Top Model. Uh, the new season. What, what is, is it? What do you What do you watch this? Well, it's it's, uh, it's on Netflix right now. Okay. Uh, Good. but you can Good watch Lord. it. It's on other social media influencers that have gotten big on social media oh, that have started bad. the transition to modeling strictly from social media. Oh, so, that sounds yeah. interesting. Not that I know a lot about failed, it. Fail, your failed modeling days, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you have to yeah, live yeah, vicariously yeah. through that. America's Next Top Model, boom. Uh, what do you got? Are you watching or listening to anything that's incredible right Reading, now? Reading, watching, people? anything. I, uh, you know, I, I think that nothing new out on this one, like, but uh, obviously I love I loved Silicon Valley when it was out. Ooh. Great show. Ooh. Best show. HBO show, and then I loved uh, Billions. Billions. Uh, Classic. Yeah, billions that's been, back. it's coming back. 
And then as far as uh, as far as I'll throw out a movie. I saw a movie uh, a couple weeks ago that was just outstanding. Okay. And it's a movie it was on Netflix. I'd never heard of it before. It's called The Bastards of Baseball. Okay. And Bastards of Baseball. It's about the story of Kurt Russell's father, Bing Russell, and um, how he was the very first person to start an independent baseball team and how wildly successful this got in Portland. And it was it was wow. an awesome, awesome movie. Okay. Oh my God, I'm like checking that, that out. Yeah, I'm checking one. that out. Put it on the list, guys. I love um, it. Derek, honestly, thank you so much. This was incredible, guys. Obviously, CircaLasVegas.com. Room reservations open December 28th. All the amen- other amenities are open right now. Um, this has been incredible. Make sure you go check them out on Instagram. Everything else, too. Book your room. Come stay at it. We really appreciate you coming on, too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Obviously, everything on the podcast, at the, the, the Residency Pod on Instagram. Make sure you check us out on Apple, Spotify, full video on YouTube. We appreciate it, man. See you well, soon. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you guys. Yeah. No and, problem. And next, time we, next time we're up here. Remember, we can always, this is a Victory Burger and Wing Company where we're at. Yeah. Every time we're doing a podcast, they're always providing the best chicken wings and burgers you could ever get. Come you're on. The, you're in the spot. There we it is. are never leaving. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there yes. it is. Yeah. Put our names on the chairs. Yeah. That's it, everybody. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.